Happy New Year, everyone. Today's video is going to focus on creating a kernel density or a hotspot map using some crime data for Little Rock. This is an example of how to take a raster then convert it to a vector format. We're going to do point because uh, after much frustration, I remembered why the polygon and integer, is integer issue exists. But if you've seen my other videos on how to create a fish net, it's not a big deal. Or if you already have a grid that you've used for a, a city, a jurisdiction, I'll link to my other YouTube video on how to make a fish net. All you would do is join your point to that polygon and you're fine. Just make sure that when you set up your kernel density and we'll go over it that you're using the same cell size for that so for example what you see in front of you is a project that i've been working on with a colleague of mine casey harris looking at violence in little rock and over the past five years well 2021 through 2017 backwards uh, so that's what you see in the table of contents but for our purposes today we're just going to focus on 2021 homicide and aggravated assault with that, this data has been claimed, trimmed to just within the Little Rock City boundary, which I also downloaded from the data portal. I'll link to it as well. Instead of going through the toolbox here, you can see I've kind of been playing around with it already today. What I want to point to, and if you're not familiar, you can always go back to, oh, it's been a hot minute, zoom to layer, uh, to the extent of what I was wanting to look at. But I've downloaded, and I'll link to this as well in the YouTube video, is I've downloaded the toolbar for crime analysis. Honestly, this is a huge help, and I'm glad that Ezra got into this. Uh, they're packaging a lot of what crime analysts use in the field and law enforcement personnel into one area. You can still find all, a lot of this, or the tools itself, sorry, embedded within different parts of the toolbox, some not as easily found. I really want to dive into the 8020 more since they updated it. But our purposes today, if we were to click down, kernel density, that's what we want to use. If you're not sure where it's located in the toolbox, spatial analyst tools. For today, click kernel density. Gives you the same input that it's asking for. It's in the geoprocessing part. So with that, we're going to input our field. This is our points of data. So each one of those blue pins is an ag assault or homicide that occurred in 2021. If you're familiar with Little Rock, 2022 was an extremely violent year for homicide counts. And I'll get into that and some other stuff. So we have that population field. We don't want to get anything else. Each one point is unique in itself. Where it's saving, I'm just going to save it to our, a KDE folder that I've been playing around with, trying to get some of this to work out correctly. So ag assault, oh, I'll do KDE ag assault. Save that. I'll put cell size. This is where I say, if you're wanting to compare this to other techniques, and I'll link to some articles when it gets into KDE parameter selection. Tim Hart and Paul Zanbergen have a very good article that I use and the one that I use when I was comparing RTM to multiple hotspot techniques and KDE. When it comes down to it, it's more so the interpolation method that's used in the kernel density part. And I use CrimeSet for mine. I'll link to that CrimeSet if you're not familiar with it. Free spatial analyst um, program. Highly recommend it. In the weeds, I'll get into that a bit later in my career, making some videos for it because it is free and it is you should be using it. Uh, but for this, I know the average uh, block length or street length in Little Rock is about 430 feet, so that's going to be my output cell size. Cell size when it comes to KDE doesn't really matter when you're doing forecasting. Search radius does, but for our purposes today, since we're not going to be making any forecasts as much as we just want to make a hotspot map itself and convert it. If you're wanting to actually make forecasts with this, what I would recommend is making multiple KDE iterations or hotspot maps using those in the same selection. So if you want to compare the top 10% of each KDE map and then layer on the following year. So this is 2021 data. If I wanted to then use 2022 data to predict and see how accurate it is, how efficient it was, you can use the PAI, PEI, PEI star that Joel Hunt put out as well. And I can link to some of that if you're really wanting to get into it. I love that kind of stuff. Haven't done it and as much lately, but I think Andy Wheeler has a really cool figure in one of his blog posts that shows PAI change over area increase. That would be really cool to see uh, when it's in comparison to other techniques as well. But for our purposes today, let's just make a three block search radius of 1290. If you're familiar with KDE and you've done this before, you probably realize if you haven't set the environments for what you're looking at, when I say environments, essentially what it's going to search. 
I need to set my processing extent to our city boundary. So this is gonna pull the left, right, up, down, max of this shape file here, the boundary file. If we were only using the point data for the crime itself, you can see it's not gonna go all the way to the right. It almost just about has it all the way south to it. North, it has it pretty good, but also on the west side, it doesn't have it all there. So it, the coordinates would change and your map would change based on that. With that, we're good there. We can come back into our parameters. Square miles is fine, density is fine. If you ever have questions, you can always hover over the information. And then you can also just Google Arc Pro, kernel density, and you'll have plenty of information that pops up within Esri itself. I'm going to hit run. It's going to generate a kernel density map for us. So with that, I'll turn off my top layer of the points. And you can see here, this is where our hotspots are. Probably not the color profile that you expect. So we always come into our symbology and change that to what we're used to. Typically, we see the green to red, much like a weather map to where red is high, red is bad. Uh, this is equal interval now. I can change this to be quantile and just have it 10 as well. Uh, change this to no color so you can kind of see what this looks like. But this is a good example of when you do use the processing extent, it does have a lot of, these are cells over here if you think about kernel density and being pixelated in that mindset. You'll need to, once this is converted to point, do another selection, select by location of only points within Little Rock Boundary, or if you already have your grid or fishnet created for your study area, just join your points to that grid layer. And if there isn't one that it's the points being joined to, you're fine and excludes those from the analysis and you're good to go. But you can see here, this is the processing extent. And when I convert it to points, we'll see what that looks like here in a second. But truly, looks like a weather map, red being bad. Oftentimes this is what people use or people in the field for hotspot mapping. You can change the symbology and how you represent this a number of different ways. But oftentimes the higher values are representative of where you would expect future crime to occur. So we could hop on the Little Rock data portal, pull 2022 ag assault and homicide, pin those on and see if those are occurring in those red, dark red places. You can create an act with the PAI, PEI, RRI, PEI star, a multitude of metrics to compare of how accurate and efficient are these techniques uh, forecasting future crime. But with that, today we're just going to get into now converting this. So we've used our kernel density, we've made a hotspot map of violence for 2021. We now want to come back. And if you're not familiar with the conversion tools, we just typed in raster2 and hit enter. It's going to give you options. We're going to do raster to point. Points will actually allow us to take our values that we have with it, which is what I forgot some of the headaches with working with raster with KDE. Just I've used other programs for some of this. I want to make sure this is being just saved on location in the KDE folder. So I'm good with that. And it's just two points. So I usually put two points at the end of it. So I'm aware of what we're working with. So it's going to run that. It's going to create a huge file that's a bunch of points, as we see in front of us. With that, you can still change the symbology of all these points. Right now, it's just a single symbol. We can still use a graduated color. Obviously, we're going to have a lot of colors if we change it based on value. It might not even load. Oh, I got to change the, oh, the label class. I haven't gotten into this stuff in a while. Uh, where is that under data exclusion? No, sample size. So sample size, it's limited to 10,000. So you can see here, that's why it stopped where the red's located. Add a few more zeros, hit update, and you can see here now that's been updated and come back to our value. And I want to use my grid code instead of that ID. And you can see now it's doing a similar process. It has the, and I'll change this to best resemble the underlying one of the raster itself. I'm gonna change this. I might be clicking too quickly. There we are. Where's my green to red? It's not giving me that one. Huh. Let's just do this one then. And for our zero values, I'm wanting to go in 
and give it no color. Still has an outline though, which is annoying, but we're good to go there. You can still see the underlying hotspots of the area. And now we have the integers now that we could use. And this is where I say, these are points that you could use depending on what you want to do and the next purpose. But this is what you can join to your fishnet and then have an example of, and this might look like it's uh, grid cells, but that's just a lot of points that are layered over each other. So you can see here that each point is the centroid of that underlying cell. So you can see what that looks like. All you would be doing is creating a fishnet, joining that point back to it to get it in a cell or a grid itself. Sometimes you don't need that depending on how you're using your data. You can still use this in underlying one, but for the most case, you'll want to join it back to your grid. If there's any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'll link to the video within this one of how to create a fishnet. And all you would do once you got to this point is create your grid. Oftentimes I do that first and create the fishnet, run the KDE, convert to point, then join those points to those individual grid cells. You're good to go. You can use that, select out your top 10% that you want to compare to another forecasting technique if you wanted to. But with that, feel free to reach out if you have questions. I'll be getting into more of this crime analysis tab as we go forward, just because it has a lot of the tools, techniques that we use more commonly, especially with our selects and everything with that. If there's any questions you have, feel free to reach out. Until next time.